Yves Saint Laurent used to say that Proust was his favorite novelist. And I do think that for anybody who loves fashion, Proust is the ultimate writer. A la recherche du temps perdu, In Search of Lost Time, is arguably the greatest novel of the 20th century. In it, he put everything he had ever experienced or thought about love, art, society, time, and fashion. In fact, fashion is really central to his novel. Among the people who taught him about fashion were Elizabeth de Caraman Chimé, the Countess Grefou, a famous beauty celebrated for her aristocratic and artistic elegance. She was the inspiration for his immortal fictional character, Oriane, la Duchesse de Guermant, of whom he wrote, each of her dresses was like the projection of a particular aspect of her soul. The Countess Grefou patronized all of the most celebrated couturiers of her day, but her style was so strong and original that she was, in effect, the co-creator of all of her dresses. The press at the time said that she preferred to look bizarre rather than banal, and whether her dresses were created for her or by her, they showed a sometimes eccentric but always distinguished elegance. Several years ago, I was waiting for the Christian Dior Couture Show to begin in Paris, and they put all of the curators together. So I was sitting next to Olivier Sayard, who's the director of the Palais Galliera, the Museum of Fashion of the City of Paris. And I asked him what he was working on. He told me he was doing shows on Azadine Alaya, on Jean Lavin, and also doing a show about the Countess Grefou. In Paris, it was La Mode Retrouvée, Les Robes Tresors de la Comtesse Grefou. Fashion recaptured or refound the treasure dresses of the Countess Grefou. In New York, we're calling it Proust's Muse, the Countess Grefou. I wanted to bring it to New York for several reasons. I wanted New Yorkers to have a chance to see the really unique dresses that were part of her wardrobe. Things like the lily dress, which belonged to the Palais Galliera. Second thing, I wanted people to meet the Countess Grefou, who was really a fashion icon of Belle Epoque Paris, kind of comparable to Daphne Guinness today. Someone, again, really aristocratic, but also very artistic. And third, I wanted people to be inspired to go back and read Proust to see how he helps us interpret the mute language of clothes. When you go into the exhibition, look carefully at unique dresses, such as the lily dress. Attributed to the House of Worth, the most famous couture house in Paris, it shows the influence of the Countess Grefou in its design and motifs. It has a princess line, which was not fashionable at the time, but was highly flattering to the Countess's figure. And it has a motif of lilies, which refers to a poem written in her honor, describing her eyes as being like the black pistils at the center of a silver lily. This is an extraordinary dress, and she worked not only with the couturier to create it, but also with the photographer Nadar to create images of herself wearing the lily dress, standing in front of a full-length mirror. The image shown in a mirror, like the image in a photograph, is an effigy of beauty that lasts forever. In addition to the famous lily dress, I'd like to call your attention to her Russian cape, which was given to her as a gift by the Tsar of Russia, and which she took to the House of Worth to have restructured to turn it into an opera cape. There's an extraordinary tea gown in a brilliant emerald green and peacock blue. She loved green because it showed off her auburn hair. And this shows somewhat the eccentricity, but also the extreme elegance and distinguished quality of her taste. Then there's the dress that she wore to her daughter's wedding, the Byzantine Empress dress. She appeared 15 minutes before her daughter, the bride, so the press had plenty of time to look at her there, and they were exclaiming, can that possibly be the mother of the bride? Are we surprised that all of the attention of the press was on the countess and her dress, and not on the poor bride and her dress? A photograph is a mirror that remembers, said Count Robert de Montesquieu. 
He was a famous poet dandy and the uncle of the Countess Grefu, and the two of them were very, very close, both of them esthetes in love with fashion and beauty. Because photographs were so important to both Proust and the Countess Grefu, in addition to the clothing and accessories from her wardrobe, we've included a variety of photographs of the Countess and her contemporaries. Pictures of Proust, of Diaghilev, of the Ballet Russe, of Gabriel Faure, the composer. For both Proust and the Countess Grefu, fashion was not only a social and cultural sign, it was also a mark of individuality, an expression of emotion, and a type of art.